Now, we've seen that Democrats have proposed $100 billion to help struggling renters face the pandemic, and there are concerns it's not enough. Now here comes hurricane season and wildfire season. So talk about the additional strain residential renters and landlords are now under. Well, there's a huge strain, and that's due, first of all, to the existing housing crisis. There was a, a crisis in affordable housing pre-pandemic, and now it's only exacerbated by the economic impact of the COVID-19 crisis. So people are losing their jobs, can't pay the rent. Um, there was a moratorium on evictions that has not been reinstated. Um, a federal moratorium, as well as some local ones. Um, so they are really facing a crisis. And, you know, you're talking about the hurricane season. That will only make everything much, much worse. So $100 billion, first of all, that is not enough. But second of all, has not happened yet. This is in the proposal by Democrats. It has not been accepted by the Republican controlled Senate. So the first struggle is to get that $100 billion um, and then to try to build on that. There need to be, um, uh, there needs to be additional relief. There need right. to be policy right. reforms to prevent people from being evicted. And so as you mentioned, rent payments in most states were put on hold till June, as were a lot of utilities that weren't allowed to be cut off for non-payment during the lockdown, but both are still going to be due, and that's despite millions of people losing their jobs due to the pandemic. How should policymakers be preparing for this? Well, so they, um, those were temporary. They could be extended. That would be reasonable given the fact that we're still in economic crisis. We're still facing um, the pandemic despite the reopening. So those could be extended. Um, rents could be renegotiated. Um, and rent, um, rental assistance obviously needs to be put in place. So we have the tools. They need to be activated. They need to be funded. And above all, there needs to be leadership, federal leadership, to make to push these um, proposals through. So then to that point, is there any one agency that's leading the charge on this, or is it a collaboration, or, or is it going to really take the federal government stepping in? Right. Well, so the federal government should be the agency, I mean, is the agency, is the um, leader of the relevant agencies. So, for example, with rental assistant assistance, that would be HUD. That is the key agency, the House, um, U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. That should be leading the charge. HUD has been quite silent so far. Um, the president should be leading the charge. So far, he hasn't been. Um, so it's, you know, the agencies that should be leading the, the charge so far have not. The leadership really has been coming from Congress, and in particular the House, which has put forth proposals. And federal agencies have faced significant criticism, not just for how they're handling it, but also delays in dispersing the funds to displaced people. Hurricane Katrina and Maria are examples where people waited more than a year for assistance. What needs to happen to streamline the process now that you have this perfect storm of hurricane season and a pandemic? Well, so FEMA is actually an agency that is known for acting quickly. It is set up to respond quickly, to respond to disasters, and to distribute funds um, quickly. Uh, it's not like other federal agencies, which have more bureaucratic processes. So I don't believe that the problem is one of a failure of assistance. It's that this has not been prioritized, and it has not been prioritized at the top. Um, namely by the White House, as something that needs to happen. I don't think the fault is, you know, with the structure of the agency. The fault is with the leadership, and that starts at the top, extends to the leadership um, of the agency itself. And that's, I mean, that results in all of these delays. And so, so what would be the consequences, then, if things aren't put in place or it's not prioritized the way that, that it should be? Well, the consequences will be more suffering for people who are feeling the impact of these multiple crises piling on top of each other. We saw the suffering that happened in Puerto Rico, um, which lasted for months and years. And so we've seen suffering. Hurricanes, of course, 
by their nature cause suffering, but it doesn't have to it doesn't have to be so extensive. We have tools to disrupt it, um, but those need to be actually implemented.